you ready? Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Lizzie Glendening and I'm the curator of Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair. Thank you for joining us this morning as we discuss um, the newly launched Woolwich Contemporary Studio, which is an arts and interiors offering that we've um, brought in for 2020, sort of new ways to immerse yourself um, with fine art in the home. And I'm joined by the four exceptional artists that have um, designed patterns for this project. We've got Eleanor May Watson, Tanaka Matsvanga, Adelia Swanzers, and Kat Rossiter. And they're here this morning, so we're going to discuss their patterns individually um, and also sort of art going from sort of fine artist to designer, um, their journeys and their practice as artists, and also reimagining the interior, especially this year when it's been so pertinent, lots of us sort of having to re-navigate the uh, living space, living and workspace. So um, the first image that you can see on the deck here is an installation shot of Eleanor May Watson's um, three by 11 meter frieze, which is based on a monotype. It's called Other Echoes Inhabit the Garden. And we're going to come to that later in the, in the presentation. Um, but first of all, I thought I'd go through each artist and introduce their practice and let them tell you more about their work and their journey um, so far. So um, if I move on, can everyone, can you all see the screen share? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is uh, Floating Islands by Tanaka Matsuvanhanga. Uh, Tanaka is Zimbabwean-born but London-based artist and she um, won the commission for 2020, the installation, central installation for uh, our, our fair in November last year. And this was a really beautiful, very ethereal, very pattern heavy um, print that she made to, and it was, it was so well received. And a lot of the pattern within the piece, the, within the Floating Islands um, pattern she's created for Willett's Contemporary Studio um, is taken from this piece. So Tanaka, would you be able to tell us a little bit about how this, um, this installation came about first of all, and maybe just give us a background into your work. And um, your, I mean, I believe you trained as an architect originally, and then you've moved into fine art. But if I'm wrong, <laughs> just just correct me. But I'll hand it over to you. Uh, yeah, I did study architecture um, from 2010 to 2014 at Kingston School of Art. But then in my final year, I realised that. Um, maybe architecture was not for me in the traditional sense. So I was more interested in experimenting with printmaking and kind of like um, documenting the surfaces of the urban landscape. So that's how my um, practice kind of like started. And then I, yeah, experimented with printmaking for like maybe three years before I decided to apply for an MA in printmaking at Campbell School of Arts. So I did that from 2017 to 2019. Um, yeah, and then during then, that's when I kind of like found out like how I wanted to maybe express my thoughts in terms of like how I navigated myself around the urban landscape um, which led to me kind of like documenting the surfaces, um, textures um, that we overlook in the landscape. Um, yeah, so that's how I kind of like started. Um, so for this piece, I was kind of like interested in experimenting with um, the form and line through the layering of um, colors and the intricate lines. So um, this installation is actually um, kind of like inspired from my graduating piece from my, um, from my MA, um, which was like um, the same kind of like format of like a, a, like a roll. 
and then how we kind of like responded to the um the space that it was hung in and how people interacted with the piece so um yeah I wanted the piece to be quite um interactive that the from the scale and then um from how people view it you know with the undulating sequence I wanted people to be drawn in from that drawn in by that and then they kind of like interact with the space but no interact with the inter installation by um trying to see the hidden um the hidden sections yeah so if you if the audience um take in some of the pattern that you can see throughout the um throughout this piece if we go to the next slide we'll see some of those patterns re-emerge and the shapes re-emerge within Tanaka's design for um, wall coverings and textiles. And, you know, it's really bold. It's really, in my head, I was thinking um, almost like a really modern, really conceptual idea of chintz and sort of recreating this sort of really quite being sort of completely covered in sort of the whole room covered in this kind of pattern with matching fabrics, with matching wallpapers, matching lampshades, and completely like being quite bold and heavy with it. Um, so here's some of the products we had made up for the sheets on the right, uh, for the sheet on the right hand side. And it really sort of um, works well and integrates well with that classical design, but also the shapes so, so contemporary and bold. Um, so, We'll go to the next item and pop back to this one. We've got it at the bottom right. You can see how it works on a on a fabric, um, and we've got an example of it here, which I'll which I'll come to you in a bit. But if we go to the next slide, these are the pieces that um, Tanaka again the shapes reappear in Pastel Islands, which is a piece that Tanaka is showing this year at the fair, um, and there was a really great talk. Um, it's called Conversation Pieces on the Woolwich Contemporary Instagram, where Tanaka and a colleague spoke about their work in relation to artists that they admire. But also there was a great history to Tanaka's work where you discussed um, sort of trying to um, sort of explain sort of what you'd seen when you went on a recent trip to Ghana, for instance. Could you give us a little bit more information on Pastel Islands here? Oh yeah, um, so these, well, it's from a series of six and it's the first print that I made when I came back from Ghana. Um, so when I went to Ghana, I was um, looking at Ghana's colonial past and then I was going through um, the Gold Coast um, going visiting all the um, slave castles and from there um, I was just really interested in how the face the spaces felt so layered with the history and how um, you can almost kind of like see how they're layered and how they're kind of like peeling back and you can see all this history so that's what I was kind of like interested in and as well as like Ghana is just like a very vibrant city, I oh, don't know, very, very, very vibrant country. And then I was based in um, Accra. And then Accra is just like very vibrant from that. It's like a city that never sleeps. Um, the architecture is quite vibrant as well as kind of like the signage. And I'm just kind of like interested in that. So with this piece, I was just like, I wanted to um, kind of, um, express that, express kind of like that layering and that depth of history. So that's what I was trying to do with this piece. Um, and then also kind of like stitching back into it and then also adding the um, African print fabric that I got from Ghana so that there's a connection between um, the forms and then the space that I had visited. So that's what I was trying to and I've like explore in this piece. Brilliant. So the reason I've um, showed um, what Tanaka is doing now, as well as the um, the patterns that she's created for the studios, because it's really interesting to me to, and for people maybe to see this sort of 
the stages of fine artist and the the journeys that they go on and um the whole point of the studio collection is that it is a limited edition run of, of patterns designed to be um created recreated as um with it as fabric and wallpaper so it, they're still original artworks um they've been designed as such so it's not sort of too much off the the original print aspect of Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair and it's just a part of this these artist journeys um and it's another fine art um string to their bow I guess um so Tanaka thank you so much I'll come back to your piece later when we talk about the um the sort of the tactile nature of the, the pieces. Um, the next work, I think it's Adelia's one that I wanted to introduce you to. So Adelia's joining us from Lisbon. Um, I know you've been on residency there for a while. Um, so this top piece is Untitled Three, which was part of an exhibition of works, a solo show by Adelia at my gallery, Brockett London, um, called Upon Infinity in 2017. And I just really loved the, um, the title, which we wanted to take it over into the pattern title as well, um, because it's sort of this exploration of the sublime, which Adelia focuses on very much in her work. She creates these incredible, these incredible sort of organic shapes and ethereal patterns. Um, and this is sort of exploration of the mind. And the actual pattern that we'll come to is, has evolved from this installation on the bottom from 2018, where it's sort of a mixed media drawing and print um, piece, piece by Adelia. Um, so Adelia, could you tell us more about this work on the bottom right? And then we'll go in and, then, and introduce us, uh, tell us a little bit more about your work and what, why you're in Lisbon right now. Okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, actually that installation piece uh, came from Lisbon as well, uh, from a few years ago that I did a residency here. And uh, somehow the space where I was, um, it was really big and, and um, I just wanted to, to use it, no? to, to get immersed in, in that space and just explore um, paint, well, painting a little bit further and uh, well painting and printing so I started making these uh, rolls on Japanese paper uh, that were covering part of the the space the warehouse where I was and uh, yeah that then I brought back to London um, now I'm back in Lisbon actually after a few years um, because, well, um, just before lockdown, I was between here and Madrid, and then um, I was just traveling as well. Uh, I guess uh, still exploring that idea of the sublime by just um, going to uh, the middle of nature and just trying to feel um, some ex extreme exper experiences and then trying to project that onto my work. Um, I also, um, during these journeys, I also collect uh, lots of pigments that then I use on my work um, as a form of painting, uh, I mean as a form of paint. And uh, yeah, I'm back in Lisbon, I did a residency uh, during the summer um, on the southern bay of Lisbon in this industrial area where I actually live in at the moment. Um, I managed to get a space after the residency and um, I've also started a, a master's at the RCA and due to the situation is everything in the distance so um, I feel I'm quite lucky at the moment to, to have this space to work in and just keep uh, exploring and <clears throat> developing my practice. Brilliant, thank you. And also you've... Um... Adelia has shown um, some, a number of occasions some monotypes, really beautiful monotypes at Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair as well. So it worked really well. And then if we come to her pattern, um, we've popped it, we work quite closely with the mill here. So we're working with very like, family run Lancashire mills um, who have been actually hit really badly with COVID. So um, 
the sort of production time that we thought originally when we thought about this project that it would take a number of weeks has actually taken months and months but we decided with them that the kind of organic shapes that appear from Adelia's work would work best on a sort of natural organic linen so um, you can see here an example of how they work and as products um, and they just translate really beautifully um, so I'll just come on to the next pattern. We'll go back to this when we have a look at the pieces later. So again, another RCA graduate um, is Kat Roster. And um, hi Kat, you join us from Sheffield today. Is that right, from your studio? Yeah, from yeah. Sheffield. Brilliant. And um, so these uh, top two images are just examples that um, I wanted to show, but We've um, worked with Kat for about five years now. Um, she show, had a couple of solo shows at, at my gallery, like Adelia, and um, but she's an exceptional printmaker. And you've worked in the with the Chapman Brothers studio, um, but a lot of your work uh, again is around this um, this surreal kind of nature, reinterpreting maybe illustration or or kind of. Um, aspects of looking at childhood or innocence or on the other side this sort of maybe uh, indulgence or grotesqueness and things like that so uh, I always loved these levitation series um, that we showed in 2016 at the fair at the inaugural fair and again um, a further versions of, um, of this series in 2017 as well and they're just they're so humorous and gentle but really also they're really deep and sort of what they're trying to say and things like that so can you give us a little bit more about your um printmaking process and, and background and then we'll go on to the colorful works that we see here which were were from a residency that you did in 2018 yeah so talk about the levitation stuff first What's your background as a printmaker yeah so i i studied under illustration but i never got on with it I always, you, I probably was more illustrative in drawing than in the content. Uh, so I'd, all, I'd always go off on tangents from all the briefs that they give you. Um, I studied at the, I did etching, at, I, I snuck up and did etching a lot on the, on the print floor in Camberwell, my BA. And then after that, that's where I made that levitation series. So that was really intensely illustrative work, but it, but um, it was more drawing, storytelling than I'd say illustration. And then after that, when I did my MA at the RCA, I worked with Alan Smith. He was like one of the, what well, he still is, he's, he's kind of like one of the real masters of etching. Um, and he taught me on a bigger scale really. Uh, and then from that, I went on to do some etching at the Deckel Studio in Cambridge with um, David down there, and he had also studied under Alan. Um, and Alan, Alan's quite, well, he's known as a bit of a character, really. He's quite um, hard to work with for some people, but if he knows you're quite honest and authentic, he can, he's just a real help, really. So that's, that's how I got into etching. Um, yeah. So um, these pieces, the Big Run Kiss 1 and 2, and also the smaller coloured work from Woolwich Contemporary Editions, these were pieces that you created on this Deco residency from a Woolwich Contemporary Prize they awarded you in 2017, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you can see the shapes evolving from, that you'll see in the next, in the next slide, some of the characters that we see uh, in that bottom right hand corner and the sort of um, bulbous rounded shapes of, of indulgence and um, they're, they're just really characterful kind of cartoonish but really um, really pertinent and sort of some of the um, the, the, the things that you're trying to sort of say about this kind of indulgence and things like that. So if we go on to the next slide, sorry, I lost my bearings for a second. So this is the pattern that um, Kat has created through, we've got some examples of her um, preliminary sketches and shapes that she brought from say things like the Deco residency and, and pieces like that. And 
it was really um, for for me. We were um, when I approached Kat about this. I was thinking quite a lot about the the newly renovated, the recently renovated um, painted hall in Greenwich um, with the Baroque this amazing Baroque sort of masterpiece at the end of the hall going right up. And that's, in my head, I was thinking that would kind of translate really well for this traditional or reinterpretation of a traditional toile setting. So I don't know um, if people watching um, are sort of familiar with a, a toile pattern, but those sort of historical maquettes of people being sort of re repeated throughout. There's always a lot of parasols and elaborate Georgian dress and here we've um, created this pattern from 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 Kat's sort of small mise-en-scene I guess um, of these I, I, are they all men I think they're all male characters um, yeah they've got they've got a mixture of them um, where all their private parts are all mixed up really so they're they cross over a lot yeah no, exactly <laughs> Uh, really, um, so in terms of what of things, so when we were thinking about, so it is that it is overtly sexual, a lot of it, and we didn't want to remove that because that's <laughs> what we love about the work as well. Um, so you know, it's a brave, it's a brave pattern to pop on. That was the whole point of sort of inverting that sort of traditional, traditional style. Um, and also, you can see Kat's drawings at the the side there. They're just some of the really beautiful pieces, and they're so evocative and a full of character just sort of simple line drawings that we really wanted to celebrate here um, and so Kat sort of this is one of the colorways that we went with the, the green uh, sorry the brown yellow and and pink but you did you, you colored a number of pat patterns for us and we wanted to keep the um, the pencil marks you know because obviously uh, people like the production company were like do you want to kind of fade it out and make it cloudier but we were like no the whole point is that it's 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 supposed to be representing fine art and uh, we want the pencil marks you know the, the colored pencil marks so um we'll, so we'll, we'll speak more about this later but finally I wanted to introduce everyone to Eleanor May Watson who has created something slightly different to the um the, the wallpapers and um textiles that you've created um, a huge um, three by 11 meter uh, monotype that's been designed to become an addition of 10 installation pieces. So here we've, um, here you are installing it in your studio ready to, for us to, to shoot initially um, back in, May, I think, but we, I wanted to show people this so they had some sort of um, can, can get grasp the ratio and the size the size of it. Um, could you tell us a bit more about this? Maybe we'll go to the the final piece here. So it's other echoes inhabit the garden. Um, it's taken from a poem, um, and it's based on, and the image is based on, I believe, a found photograph of the canopus, the pool at Hadrian's Villa. Could you give sure. us some more background into this, and maybe your journey from us seeing your uh, uh, a monotype at the City and Guilds Graduate Show, and how that's evolved into creating this piece? Sure. Firstly, that isn't my studio. That would be during me, but it's the gallery in my studio building. My studio is not like a vast thing. It's quite nice, but it's not <laughs> a massive gallery space. Um, so my first kind of foray into installation or making really vast scale work was for my degree show for my master's at City and Guilds, which happened last September. And that's where you came to see the work. and. That's how the conversation started with thinking about making a wallpaper and I was interested in that kind of enveloping of space and being inside and outside um, and being here and there interested me about making a wallpaper. The title is taken from a T.S. Eliot poem called Burnt Norton and lots of my work leading up to this has been looking at kind of legacy of empire and how we deal with that um, very heavy, difficult history, because a lot of it is kind of escapist 
in the British consciousness, it feels like it's a kind of escapist thing into this kind of beautiful patterned world of beautiful things and lovely light and like always gorgeous. Um, but then it's also incredibly heavy and difficult. Um, and I've been really interested in that like kind of ambivalence and that push and pull of that identity. Um, and then for this work, I found this um, really beautiful grainy old photograph of the Canopus Portico. Um, and was immediately drawn to it and lots of my imagery is because I am pulled towards something but it makes me feel odd so I had that reaction to this um, and I guess we're just coming out of the first lockdown and we'd been and I've been locked in my southeast London no garden flat for like ages and I think I just wanted to be traveling or elsewhere and it's kind of that kind of escapism fed into this piece um, the poem um, really resonated because he wrote it in 1936, visiting a dilapidated country house. Um, so it's kind of the things that I'm interested in are touched on in that poem, but it's also a lot about history and how we experience the present and how the past and the future are embedded in our present and how we deal with our limited lifespan and the experience of history and like those combination of the individual and then that span of history. So that really kind of linked back into this being Hadrian's villa built in the reign of Hadrian. And also the fact that this, I'm waffling on, but the fact that this space itself um, is kind of a monument of empire, but also an incredibly personal individual experience of loss because it's a dedication to his drowned lover Antinous who um, drowned in the Nile. And this is meant to be a take on Canopus, which is a tributary into the Nile. And it's got um, a temple to Serapis, the Greco-Egyptian god. Um, so there's like all, lots of layered interpretations that the more I researched into it, the more I was kind of drawn into the imagery and what it um, symbolized as well as a really beautiful kind of escape and then also the link into that kind of grand tour cultural tourism or cultural consumption and how we kind of um, brought it back to the UK and that's take, uh, like made a lot of our, the collections in the UK and country houses and that kind of thing so that also kind of fed back into the way I was thinking about it. It's really interesting because there is very much a link through all four artists um, sort of narratives in a way. So this sort of idea of identity, the histories and the present being, you know, sort of histories being embedded in our present, as you say. Um, and this um, in terms of sort of um, looking for knowledge of the grand tours, for instance, and thinking about the Baroque within um, the Baroque and the Rococo within Katz's work as well. And so there's all this, and also the sort of excavation of the mind, but also the, with Adelia's work, but also the excavation of history generally. Um, so it's really interesting how this sort of threads link through all the works, um, which I find personally fascinating. And maybe that's why I'm drawn to you all as artists. So um, that could be the case. Um, so here we are, so this is, um, so sadly, obviously, because we didn't have a physical event this year and we've had to go online um, for the online edition um, for 2020, and we weren't able to present um, or debut this monotype in the flesh, as it were, um, which we're still working on, we will be doing that um, very soon. But um, this is Eleanor's work in situ within a booth. It's three meters by 11 meters um, in size. And this is in situ at the online edition. And like um, the piece that Jack and I saw at your uh, graduate show, your MA graduate show last year, um, you've, put, you've deliberately hung other pieces on top of the work, this is how you want to um, how you want the work to be seen and engaged with. So I've given a couple of examples here of, of work. So the, these works are individual, and they they uh, sort of are for sale, I guess, um, 
very separately to the monotype, um, but you like you want to exhibit them deliberately with this with this background. Could you give us a little bit? You don't have to talk about these works specifically; they are examples. But maybe give us a little bit of uh, information about your other pieces in relation to the to the large monotype. Um, well, for I'm a painter, so. Um, I come to printmaking very much from like a painterly point of view, which is obviously why monotypes appeal to me because they're kind of in between. Um, so I was interested in layering different imagery um, and disrupting space, the spatial relationship between the, the viewer and what they're seeing and how they see it. So these pieces are part of a, the case series and they're actually framed in like a box frame behind glass. Um, and that's part of this kind of museumology or containment or display of things taken out of context and put within a collection or a home. Um, so I guess my work really lends itself to talking about uh, domesticity and like collections and home and um, value and beauty and how we deal with all of that within a kind of fine art or high art or how we attribute value to things. Um, so I don't know if that really answers the questions, but these are kind of snapshots or objects contained within another world, within another space, and then put into a frame and then almost like a vitrine or like a museum piece, I guess. And is there a reason um, that you choose, you work on Bible paper? Is that a sort of comment or is that just the, the nature of it being the head weight of it? It's just a really lovely material. I don't know if the other printmakers have ever used it, but it's like, um, it, just has a really precious feel to it. Um, and I, so it's not really a religious, it's not a comment on faith or religion or Bibles or anything like that. But it's just okay. a lovely material. Brilliant. Okay, so I think, um, oh, sorry, I'll stop the share there because it's just gone onto my desktop. Can everyone, can everyone see? So just back to normal. Okay, well, um, so I just wanted to give a bit of background. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. And I just wanted to give a bit, bit of background um, into myself and my journey into um, kind of taking this route this year into uh, art and interiors. So um, I'm a curator and um, my background training is in um, art history and curatorial studies, but obviously, um, in my sort of career, I've, I'm drawn to um, find it, you know, finding narratives, finding placement, finding beauty in in everything that surrounds us, which I guess is the nature of a curator and an artist in a way, sort of trying to find stories and and um, and places and placemaking. Um, so we set up um, the Living with Art service. Um, which is sort of like a consultation service about curating art within people's homes and finding new um, new approaches to engaging with art within an, an interior work setting. And then that's sort of evolved into uh, Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair and our um, art and interior spaces where we work with interior designers and in the past few years, um, interior bloggers, influencers to create these uh, maybe more familiar style spaces for people to engage with art who might not be necessarily um, comfortable with a kind of white wall gallery system um, and just see sort of how, how they can work or have pieces of work in their home if they never thought that print or contemporary art was for them. So this sort of uh, then the studio sort of evolved from that and I really wanted to know how people can completely immerse themselves in contemporary art in the home and just you know absorb constantly because I enjoy absorbing constantly so it might so this is why I approached um, Eleanor Tanaka, Kat and Adelia um, and so I've been really excited about this obviously with lockdowns and Covid it's it's really sort of brought a whole new sort of sort of angle to it because we're all reassessing and reimagining our interiors and how we how we engage with everything in our home and also how we navigate home versus workspace and have these sort of um different 
different spaces or, or different things for different points you know um so anyway this is what so this is why again a lot of our production times were delayed because these small mills in Lancashire were closing for sort of two weeks at a time because if someone had COVID then the whole operation had to shut down so it's been this sort of long conversation for about I don't know eight months I think since we started talking about the project so um I thought maybe we could maybe you guys would like to give me some feedback on how you found um, accessing studios and how your work's developed during the recent, you know, last few months. I know, for instance, Tanaka, you won the East London Print Prize last year. Um, and we had a really great conversation, or Jack Bullen did. Um, he had a really great conversation um, about with East London printmakers last week and their exhibitors' highlights. And we spoke a little bit about Tanaka's um, studio time um, and I mean, I don't know how accessible it was for you in terms of being COVID and lockdown. And also Kat, like me, we've got young children and with no childcare during six months, is that how do you actually work? And uh, I found it incredibly difficult. It's hard to work full time with a baby, you know, running around. So if anyone has any um, thoughts or feedback or could tell me about how you've managed and navigated that. So, well, I just found this year that you, you, you take the time where you can, which has been in little tiny bits, really. So we'd have, lo we'd have like big, big lengths of time where I wasn't really doing anything and then really concentrated week where you could get, get the childcare or get some, some going. But it's been completely like scarce to get in and do proper work for a long length of time. Mm -hmm honestly. And Tanaka, did you, um, did you manage to get to use your, um, your studio time in East London? Yeah, I did actually. Um, I think I started back going to the studio. I think I started going back more in October, like start of October. So I started going back then. And um, yeah, so I've been going, I was going every kind of like every week because I had like 10 open sessions from the prize so I was going every week and then I would have like a little break and then go back again um so I finished the sessions I think like two three weeks ago but it was quite because I have like a little routine that is only like certain people um certain number of people allowed in um in the space whether it's like an etching or in screen so I was kind of like moving back between etching and screen printing. So it was quite, it was quite good. And I know that with Eleanor, we had some um, sort of challenges trying to photograph the work, um, sort of rules and regulations, obviously within open access and, and sort of artist studios and um, trying to keep everyone safe. And so us wanting to send like a photographer in, it's very, like there was lots of red tape to go through, wasn't there Eleanor? And I don't know how you and Corey now worked out having to shoot things separately because I wasn't able to be there because we were locked down. So we had to sort of do everything remotely. Um, and so yeah, you, you guys cracked on that. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, I'm really lucky to be part of a co-op, but it does mean that decisions are made much more slowly because everything's done on a kind of voluntary basis and everyone's getting on with the kind of mad COVID 2020. So it just took a long time to get responses to get permission to get in. And then obviously there was a tight turn around for you to try and get them, the wallpaper printed in time. Um, but we got there. It was good. It had to get scanned in the end, didn't it? So. Yeah, so basically <laughs> um, we thought that a huge, you know, incredible um, Corey, who's our photographer, um, we thought that we'd be able to manage um, recreating this work. Um, through photography, because it's going to, it was designed to be digitally reproduced as an edition of 10, but it didn't work like that. Um, and we had to send it around the country um, to these super huge, massive, I can't even explain how they do it, but these scanners to fit these, this work into. Uh, and they managed, to, they managed to do that for us. Um, and I, we've got an example, I mean, We've got an example. So one of the things that was the issue was um, 
also after this subsequently was we were meant to host for all of all of the products um within a studio have studio shots have the artists come and like be with their products and this sort of thing but um this couldn't happen so I ended up I was lucky enough to be able to put the prototype of Eleanor's piece up in our sitting room um luckily we adore it uh, I'll show please excuse the baby um bits <laughs> but um you might be able to see so this is as you saw on the opening um image we've um installed it in our sitting room so we could take images um but this isn't this is only the prototype it's not one of the additions so the addition itself is on a really beautifully heavy um textured paper um and the company um this company in Lancashire who have created it specialize in these these sort of large scale freezers so when you've seen things um like public art pieces and things they're often the people that have have done that so they're used to do editioning for um for fine artists um I've got a couple of pieces here so I thought we might talk about the sort of um tactile nature of actually being able to hold limited edition work sort of actually touch it <laughs> um so this is um a fabric that we've had I don't know if you can see it so this is Tanaka's fabric so it's limited to a thousand meters um and the wallpaper is limited to a thousand rolls um so it's on an uncoated organic cotton uh 100 cotton and it's um it's sort of, it's called a non-optic white so it's not um it's not too harsh it's very soft and again cats will be on an is on a non-optic white but cats is also on this organic linen but um but this is linen and well, it's organic linen, but this is called organic, like 100% cotton. Um, so this is like really natural um, color. I think you saw it better, but it's, it's really heavyweight as well. So it's beautiful. And um, we're sending all the artists um, a few meters of this. So you can all um, do sort of your own installations with it. And we can like play with it in the new year. And hopefully it'll be like much more fluid to, um, much more fluid times to work in and um, actually meet up and do something together on the project. Um, so I, if anyone's got questions, they're welcome to put things in the bottom here. But um, in terms of say, uh, well, in terms of all the works uh, and all the patterns, uh, what I'm really interested in is the sort of, the kind of historic aspect of being completely immersed in contemporary art. So you go to like homes of amazing artists, say the Bloomsbury group, or there's a Russian artist that I love growing up that we knew um, in Durham and they, you know, painted all the panels around them, you know, with their own work. And I think it isn't, it isn't new. It's just isn't done that much really in sort of everyday homes. And I think it's, it's something that can be, for us, we just thought the studio project is a really nice way to um, like lighten the mood a bit <laughs> and um, and and give some some people some you know something to look forward to when they go home rather than just your regular your regular interiors. So um, does anyone have any questions? Do you guys want to say anything? I guess I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other artists um, how do you go because there's always that panic about being decorative and especially with me I get um, one of the unconscious that I do I express things or communicate things via beauty and that become and that can be decorative um, do you guys have that similar panic that you don't want your work to be seen as just decorative but then if you're making a design for an interior design uh, context how did you guys approach that that's not specific to any one artist so that's maybe not helpful <laughs> someone jump in <laughs> um I get I, I yeah I, I do know what you're talking about I think because for such a long time now I've been drawing from the like the body and the flesh you are aware you're taking on a quite a long European history of like beautifying the body um 
and coming at it from that angle. But then um, I do quite like the feeling of something, well, what is perceived maybe as being appealing to look at or beautiful, but having an underlying, having a friction with it being quite ghastly, really, what you're, what you're trying to explore or say or bring to light. Mm -hmm. um, What's your source material, Kat? Um, I was, this time was looking, for a long time, I've been uh, looking at English painting and the typical portraiture of like 17th, 18th, 16th century and how um, austere and well-to-do it all looks, um, more so, I think, than any of the other European countries. And yet it has... I think I've got a quote actually I was looking at by that um, songwriter, I think Shirley Collins. And she was talking about the dark heart, how England has the darkest heart of all. But the, the friction of knowing that and knowing that the underlying kind of belly of it all and looking at those por portraiture, all the portraiture, and there is no sign of anything in their faces other than ownership, happiness, and uh, the domestic surroundings they're in. Like there's nothing psychological going on. And that really freaked me out the more that I was looking at it all. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's where it was all coming from. Then the more I was drawing from that, the more that all the bodies and the things that I was drawing became more and more corrupt and more, more um, lascivious, more erotic. Um, they just, it was like the logical conclusion to it really, that they became more and more and more grotesque and more sexual and more um, intense. Yeah, so that's where it came from. Mm. <laughs> interesting how um, you just mentioned Eleanor about defining the boundaries and then this sort of cross-purpose practice um, as fine artists and then creating a pattern for an interior your designers now <laughs> like you you've yeah. designed a pattern so it's this sort of um, and I think we're seeing a, a lot more of it as well um, I just think it's um, I think it's really enlightening to, to see that artists are open to more of these cross-purpose things and, and not cut off to um, collaborative projects and things. I mean, could you um, give us any examples of other collaborations that you've worked on or, or admire, for instance? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have something. There is, I really enjoyed it. As, I mean, I've, it's been a highlight of my year, really, um, to do something that's so out of my comfort zone, I guess. That's really kind. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, any of the audience, I don't, I don't see any um, questions from the audience. So maybe if anyone does have any questions, they can drop us a line at Woolwich and then we can, if it's for any of the artists in particular, we can forward those on and um, get back to you. So. Um, I think, I mean, we've been on for 50 minutes, so maybe we could, we should close up. Um, but I really think that we've, uh, well, I personally have really loved hearing more about the sort of intricacies of um, your practice and the pieces and the, the patterns that you've created as well. Um, and I hope that it gives um, more depth to some of the, um, the, the products that you might see um, within say, um, the hangings that you see with the works in the fair, um, I think like, yeah, click in, read about them. <laughs> so really, really worthwhile. Um, these are four fantastic, you know, deep artists. They're, you know, professionals and they have a, a narrative that's really worth hearing. Um, we've had some nice um, comments from Mark G. Um, he's really enjoyed the, the chat and loves the paintings on top of Eleanor's work. And, loves the islands. Oh, and Adelia, I think he might know you, or he just sends hearts. <laughs> so um, anyway, brilliant. Thank you all so much for joining us. And thanks to the audience, thanks to the artists. 
and um, this will be available on our website to to um, to watch if um, you know if anyone's missed it or you just want to see it again. Okay, brilliant. Thank oh. you so much. Oh, go on. Someone said you said you were going to come back to things. Oh, do you want us to go? Yeah, we can go back through the, the patterns if you'd like us to. Do you have anything specific, Jill, that you'd like us to talk about? We can go, we can go back through the, um, let me get the presentation up and then we can screen share. Um, one second. Um, sorry, I'm just working out how to screen share. Here we are. Um, So this is the, um, Eleanor's freeze installed, um, the prototype installed in my home. Um, and um, through my career as well, I've met people both installing artwork in their homes, but also working on projects like a full in project, which is something that, you know, I'm really, I also have an MA in fashion curation. So I'm really like interested in textiles, textile conservation, textile installation. Um, so here we are, this is Tanaka's floating islands pattern. Um, this is recreated in the textiles here and then it will be in a softer white. I mean, this is the reason they're so stark as patterns is because they're sort of without background, they get transferred onto, um, onto the, the paper or the textile in the, in the factories. Um, so they come across as really stark, but actually in real life, it's much softer. Um, and these are Tanaka's version. So this is Tanaka's um, Pastel Islands that uh, is in the online edition currently until next Sunday at um, Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair. And on the right is um, Tanaka's piece that's available all year round um, within our editions program, which you can also find if you go to the shop tab in Woolwich Contemporary Print Fair website. And these are backgrounds into the evolution of Adelia's pattern upon infinity, which are very organic shapes based on a sort of mixed media print installation from the previous page. Um, put it on a natural fabric deliberately. Um, I think there might be a question. One second. Chat, sorry. Oh. Someone's saying the island series is beautiful. <laughs> um, can we do this? So this is Kat's, um, some of the works that we've shown before with Kat and also um, the pieces at the bottom were created on a residency that Kat was awarded um, from Deco, Deco Print Studio in Cambridgeshire. Um, and as she mentioned earlier, the um, wonderful man that runs Deco also studied under the same person that, that Kat, was it Alan, who um, Kat studied under at the RCA. So um, there's a lot of, links there and the shapes you can see these sort of uh figures the indulgent figures these 18th century figures that Kat just mentioned uh in terms of indulgence portraiture this kind of thing so you can see that uh, recreated here in the pattern again it's very stark because this background is just the the pattern itself um when it's actually layered onto a fabric or paper, it's much softer and it's much more natural, the tone of white. Um, and this um, finally is Eleanor Mae Watson giving some scale um, with her monotype as she installed it in the gallery in the studio that she works in, Lewis Mart House. Um, and the, this is a monotype created to be reproduced as 20 um, digital, digitally reproduced editions, oh sorry, 10. Um, and that's available through the site and it's, um, here is the final piece, really awesome. Um, and here it is installed at the online edition. And we'll have it installed in a, a space in uh, central London in early 2021, we hope. <laughs> oh, and I'll stop the share because you don't want to see all my 
folders. Okay, so um, I hope that's okay. And um, there's no open questions. Um, I'm gonna leave it there and say thank you everyone. And if anyone wants to ask me anything specific, um, just send an email to info and we will get back to you or um, send it on to the, the individual artist. Okay, everyone have a great weekend. We're um, actually getting our Christmas tree later today. So I don't know if any of you have like finally getting festive or anything like that, but um, yeah. you, yeah. I'm fine like leaving it to way later. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. So um, thanks for everyone joining us and thank you for, for taking part. Thanks Lizzie. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye.